Mental illness. One in 25 adults and one in five kids have at least one. And in a world full of stigma and judging, it's hard for everyone who experiences mental illness to get help. And still, even though people noticeably suffer because of mental illness, many of their peers think that they just want attention, that they're lazy. But that's far from the truth. Twenty percent of youth ages 13 to 18 have a mental health condition. One in five adults in the U.S., that's 44 million people, experience a mental illness in a given year. Only 41 percent of adults in the U.S. with a mental health condition received mental health services in the past year. A big reason people don't get the help that they need is because they're afraid of what their friends and family would say. People use phrases like OCD and psycho and ADHD, like they're just regular emotions that everybody experiences. I talked to former school psychologist and licensed therapist Janet Payne about the stigma surrounding mental illness. Bipolar. People talk about bipolar as if it's something that you had for lunch. So, yeah, I think that people don't know at all what they're talking about, but the words have become part of our regular conversation in life. So it gets very confused. People don't know that these disorders can be real and crippling. Using phrases like OCD and ADHD in casual conversation belittles those who struggle with them every day. I wanted to learn more about this, so I reached out to others who suffer from various mental illnesses. Not just in our community, not all over the U.S., but all over the world to talk with them about their experiences. My name is Tony. I am almost 17 years old and I live in Georgia. My name is Alec. I'm 17 and I live in Minnesota. My name is Wynn and I'm 19, about to turn 20, and I live in Boulder, Colorado. My name is Eva Curry. I am 17, I'm turning 18 in March, and I live in Greensboro, North Carolina. My name is uh, Valentina. I will turn 17 on Valentine's Day. I live in a super small village in, uh, in Italy, near Milan. My name is Max Wolf. I'm 21, I live in France. Okay, my name is Charlie. I am 15 years old and I am in California, San Jose, California. I'm Maya, I am 16 and I am from Maine. My name is Tyler, I'm 15 years old and I live in Florida. The stigma around mental illness is a serious issue, so let's talk about it. When I was in elementary school, like a lot of other kids, I had trouble doing what I was supposed to be doing. I had to always move and do something. I struggled to pay attention, I was a little bit loud and a bit obnoxious towards others. There's no way I was just going to sit down and not fidget. And after an interesting parent-teacher conference, they took me to a psychiatrist and gave me an evaluation and I found out I have ADHD. So what is ADHD? A persistent pattern of inattention and or hyperactivity impulsivity that interferes with function or development as characterized by. Often fails to give close attention to details or makes mistakes on work. Doesn't listen when spoken to. Doesn't follow through on instructions and fails to finish on work. Has difficulty organizing and showing poor time management. I had a teacher who, who told me I was acting or I was doing because it was uh, cool. Uh, it really screwed up my, uh, my studies. Uh. Those are what get in the way a lot for kids in school. That's what's often seen that's called lazy or they don't care. Often avoids or dislikes or is reluctant to engage in tasks that require sustained mental effort. Having people uh, saying that it's easy is basically uh, um, getting lost on their talks while uh, anyone will, would be speaking or they have to focus on something else and they can't because they don't know their tongue. Um, and uh, I took the word that was, that's, that's what was happening to me since, uh, since, I, since I can remember. Talks excessively in the age. Yes. Blurts out an answer before a question has been completed. Difficulty waiting their turn. They can't not say it. They're just, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just a, it's just their ADHD. Mm -hmm. it's the, and that's an impulsive thing. 
11% of children ages 4 to 17, that's 6.4 million kids, have been diagnosed with ADHD. Children with a history of ADHD are almost 10 times as likely to have difficulties that interfere with friendships. 60% of children with ADHD in the U.S. become adults with ADHD. That's about 4% of the adult population. Less than 20% of adults with ADHD have been diagnosed or treated, and only about one quarter of those adults seek help. I've had ADHD now for seven years. I take medication every morning so I can do well in school and excel to my full potential, but people have differing opinions about the benefits of medication. I asked multiple people with mental disorders about their experiences with medication, and I got mixed opinions. Coming to terms with the fact that medication is it gets you to a place where you can use your coping techniques better. I, I coped myself for so long and it just wasn't enough. I needed that extra push and I guess it just took some time to get to the point where I understood that's what they were. Some of them are meant to give people energy and to give them the energy that they need to function uh, in a place and some medications are to lessen the amount of energy that someone has. I know a couple of kids who hate taking medication because they think it makes them not who they are, but I think uh, having known that it's not just me being like wrong, but it's actually like a chemical imbalance and an actual problem that I can't just fix, it doesn't bother me very much to take medication. Worldwide, over 350 million people suffer from depression. That's 5% of the world's population. Clinical depression is one of the most common mental illnesses and is commonly categorized by just being sad. But it's so much more than that. What are some other symptoms of depression? Feelings of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt nearly every day. Diminished ability to think or concentrate or indecisiveness, um, yeah. recurrent thoughts of death recurrent suicidal ideation without a specific tip plan. So that's why it should be taken very seriously. For my depression, it's pretty much just like sadness, hopelessness, self-loathing, um, really irritable and angry most of the time, um, suicidal thoughts. You know, your basic run-of-the-mill depression stuff, not really wanting to get up in the morning, not really wanting to talk to people, being really drained all the time, being sad. Suicidal thoughts used to be a really big part of it, but recently not so much. It's not just a bad day, a bad moment, a bad afternoon. So I think if people understood what these symptoms were and how long you needed to have them, people would maybe take it more seriously and get people help. Depression is involved in more than two-thirds of the 30,000 suicides that occur in the United States every year. Studies show that the rates of depression for Americans have risen dramatically over the past 50 years. 80% of people with depression reported some level of functional impairment, and one quarter of them reported serious difficulties in work and home life. Despite its high treatment success rate, nearly two out of three people suffering with depression do not actively seek nor receive proper help. Like the biggest one that has the biggest effect on my life is just the depression. Um, just about standard symptoms, being tired, having no motivation, uh, generally just being in a bad mood. Like it's very difficult for me to talk good about myself. I'm always tired. Obviously, symptoms can get much worse, such as like self-harming and attempted suicide, and that just what I feel on a daily basis is mostly I'm tired. I don't I don't feel motivated to do anything. Even simple activities like doing homework or taking a shower or cleaning my room, like anything like that, I am just like uh, it's too much work, <laughs> and I just kind of want to crawl in a corner and cry. A lot of the time when I talk about it, and I'm like. Yeah, I've just been really sad this week. My mom's like, just don't let it get you down. And it's really weird because I don't have control over that. Things such as the word depression have become infiltrated into our speech as in, oh man, I'm feeling so depressed or oh man, I'm really OCD about this. It's no longer thought of as a disorder, which is part of the name. It's thought of just as, oh yeah, you're sad sometimes, bro, me too. I overeat sometimes, or I don't eat sometimes, or yeah, no, sometimes I just can't get out of bed in the morning, and I'm, it's, it's because 
all of the symptoms are the same thing as being human. It's just so much more that people don't understand that there is like a difference. We've already talked about ADHD and depression. Bipolar has aspects of both, where you go through manic episodes or mania and depressive episodes or down episodes. So what happens if someone is bipolar? The biggest symptom of bipolar is really the mood swings. I tend to just keep myself away from people when I go into mania, uh, which is when you have a lot of energy. So you either get really, really angry or really, really happy. Um, when I'm really, really happy, then I'll go hang out with people. But and when I'm really, really angry, I tend to try to stay away from people and uh, do as little harm as I can. A classic picture is a manic episode where you're up for days or do things at extremes. But these are like people who get on a mission, get into it, get a lot done, or think they get a lot done, more to the point, think they get a lot done. And depression is sort of the opposite, where you're so down, you're crying all the time, a real serious depression that you can't get yourself out of. Bipolar disorder is the sixth leading cause of disability in the world and affects 3% of adults in the United States. Bipolar disorder is categorized by the National Institute of Mental Health as a brain disorder that causes unusual shifts in mood, energy, activity levels, and the inability to carry out day-to-day -day tasks. Bipolar disorder often appears in late teens or early adult years, with half of all cases starting before age 25. Bipolar disorder results in a nine-year reduction in expected lifespan, with as many as one in five patients committing suicide. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the U.S. But the term anxiety alone can mean a few different types of disorders, which can easily confuse people. And anxiety is a broad term because, for example, OCD is an anxiety disorder. Um, but you can have a generalized anxiety disorder, sort of free-floating anxiety for unknown reasons, for sort of anything. And you could have separation anxiety where you're afraid or, you know, so there's a lot of different types of anxiety, but it is basically, and think, this is a little simplified, but it's a little bit like an irrational fear. It's pretty much like a constant state of just like being uneasy or like on edge, I guess. And I have a hard time talking to people, like even some of my best friends, I have a hard time talking to them a lot. And the main thing that happens for my anxiety is it's kind of like a tax, but not really. It usually spans like three days. <clears throat> Everything will just become unbearable. Like, I just can't focus or anything, and I'm always worrying. Like, I just can't do anything for that entire day. And then the next, like, two days after that, it'll still be like that. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States, affecting 40 million adults ages 18 and older, and 18% of the total population. Anxiety disorders are highly treatable, yet only about one-third of those suffering receive help. General anxiety disorder affects nearly 7 million adults, over 3% of the United States population, with women being twice as likely to be affected. Anxiety is a normal human emotion. The only difference between feeling normal anxiety and having a mental illness is whether or not it gets in the way of your life. A good example is obsessive compulsive disorder, more commonly known as OCD. OCD is a really serious disorder. And remember what OCD stands for? Obsessive compulsive disorder. So you have to have an obsession and feel compulsed to do something. Well, people use OCD as meaning that they're picky. I like it done the right way. Okay, so does that mean that you redo it five times before you leave the door and then you come back in and you redo it five times again because you have to have done that when you're not sure you did? The no. It means you're picky. So it's really important distinction that there is an obsession. Remember, what are, what are the preoccupying interf interfering thoughts that you're obsessed with and what do you have to do in an attempt to get rid of that obsession? Mind you, here's why it's a disorder. The compulsions really don't make it go away. <laughs> Usually I start tidying up when I feel really anxious. I just try to go tidy up sometimes. And sometimes it makes me feel good, but usually it turns into something even bigger. And I 
often end up having a panic attack, so it's not that great. OCD is characterized by obsessions and compulsions that can last an hour or more and cause significant distress. Basically, you have an obsession. Uh, well, for example, when I was little, I remember I was basically obsessed with uh, fair numbers. So I would always do everything uh, two times, four times or eight times. And uh, this thing is something that I've always done since I remember. If things aren't done exactly like that, you become anxious and may even have a panic attack. Obsessions don't always make sense, but they can still cause anxiety if they aren't acted upon. And not only do they take a toll on how you act, mental illness can take a toll on your body. I just wash my hands, uh, like, I'm not gonna lie, like 50 times a day. So when I go home, I wash my hands. When I go to the bathroom, I wash my hands like 40 times. And uh, I have to wear gloves uh, all the time when I'm out. Not just because of the germs, but because I'm sure you cannot see it, but my hands are like a 90 year old lady hands because they're so damaged and I don't really want people to see. Suicide is the third leading cause of death in youth ages 10 to 24. 90% of suicides are committed by someone with a mental illness. Four out of five people I interviewed have had genuine suicidal thoughts at one point, and over half of them have actually attempted suicide. What makes this even more tragic is that many suicides can be prevented if people with mental illnesses receive treatment for their disabilities. So one thing that you often hear people say about someone who has committed suicide is that they're very selfish. What they did was selfish. That's something I hear often. Um, in that moment, the, what the person is feeling, it's not, they're not thinking about it. They're not thinking about it that. They're thinking that they truly don't mean anything to anybody and that no one would care. Kind of interesting more than suicidal, it was more of a desire to stop existing. And part of me was like, well, if suicide is the way to do so, then that might be the option. If you are contemplating suicide, please ask a close friend or family member for help or call a prevention hotline. 1-800-273-8255 for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline or go to www.suicide.org slash suicide hotlines. Although we've talked about only a handful of mental illnesses, there are still so many more you can learn about. If you think that you may be suffering from a mental illness or someone you love has a mental illness, what can you do? My, my biggest thing would be first, I would recommend that you see like a counselor or a therapist in my experience, they will recommend you to a doctor. First and foremost, go see your primary care physician or someone about it. But if you don't want to do that, reach out to a really close friend or family member. And a lot of times they can help you through it. But I think uh, going to see a medical professional about all of this is the best choice you can make. If you think that you have depression, if you think that you have anxiety, if you think you have OCD, if you think you have ADHD, you need to see, you, you talk, you talk to your best friend and tell them about how you feel and if they don't get it, I'm, I'm not kidding. I didn't want to see a therapist, but it was probably the best thing I ever did because, hey, I'm a person. It's okay. I'm alive. Re researching. I, I researched what part of your brain causes this to happen. And once I saw a photograph of a brain with depression and a brain that was normal, I was like, this is a real physical thing that is different between me and someone else. It's not just, I'm not just like stupid or just unprepared. Probably the best way they can begin to cope is by talking about it. Like, mm -hmm. But I don't mean just in therapy. If people could talk to their friends, talk to their friends, trusted people in their life if that's if they have family who they trust if they have friends who they trust therapy can help but for teens they really need the people who they are around go see someone do that speak to one of your friends if you want but go see someone because that's always the right thing to do even speaking with the school psychiatrist and if you could take anything away from this video about mental illness, let it be. Neurotypical people don't understand is how much of an effect it has on your day-to-day -day life.
it might seem like something that's offhanded or something to the side or an excuse, but it's it occupies every moment of your life. Every action you take revolves around, can I handle this? Is this healthy? Do I want to do this? And it's I think it's a real uphill battle just fighting against what people think about your illness and trying to validate it yourself. And it makes it really hard to cope with it yourself when you're constantly being put down for it, I think or constantly being told that it's not real. So I guess just think about having that illness and doing everything you do now. Um, it's just, it's a lot harder than people think and it's hard to imagine if you don't have that kind of experience, I think. At the end of the day, it's important to remember that we're all different people. All it takes to make a better world is to be kind, understand our differences, and learn about other people so we can all help each other. A little kindness and empathy can go a long way.